pole position will be the number 944 BMW E36 M3, that dominant car, as Marcus said. Uh, Michael Cut then, number 44 on pole position. Alongside him will be the number two car of Rick Kerry, which you can see in the shot there, the one series V8. Second row on the inside will be number four, Gary Hufford, the double winner last time out at Brands Hatch, and Robert Davidson, number 33. David Kempton, number 11, whose uh, sponsors helping to bring you the live stream coverage here this weekend, uh, lines up in his E36 M3 on row three of the grid alongside number 15, Graham Crowhurst, in his later iteration, the E46 car. Uh, row four will be number 27, Richard Bromley, in the E36 M3, similar car for number 69, uh, Jason Hollyhead. Uh, Gary Burstow, number 83 in the E46, and another E46 for Adrian Williams. They line up on row five, Williams in number 67. The sixth row will be number 59, Jim Benson. He's in the first of the 330 CIs, number 59, the first of the class six cars, alongside number 64, Gareth Montgomery in an E36 M3, sorry, in the 323i. Uh, the seventh row uh, will be 66, Mark Colmer, an M2 class car in his E36 M3, and Darren Ball, 330CI car 25. Eighth row will be number seven, Kevin Denwood, in a BMW Compact, and 76 Drew Highwell in the 125i. It's a 328i for Michael Dark, number 210, on the inside of the ninth row, alongside number eight, Bill Redrop, in the M3, E36 M3. One Series V8 for Joe Geach, number 22, who, for those of you at the circuit, is an addition to the programme. Uh, he lines up uh, alongside, I should say, on row uh, 10, the number 55 car of Raheem Ballou in an E36 M3. Row 11 will be uh, 1716 Clayton's uh, BMW Mini Cooper and the E36 Compact of 54 Rob Ullman. Row 12 will be 46 Matt Page in the 325Ti and the number 40 Sean Jackson 325i. Clive Watson is car number 10 alongside Chris Graham number 51 on row 13. The 14th row will be 49 Pete Skinner and 333 Richard Harrison in the 318 IS. Uh, row 15 will be 45 Dominic Early in the E46 330 and uh, Carl McMillan in the 325Ti. And on the 16th and final row will be number 6 Adrian Ferdinands in the E46 Compact and the 31 car Paul Laramie in his 325Ti. So that's it. We'll have 16 rows of cars on the grid, 32 of them uh, in all, therefore, and they're forming up now. Last of the cars coming around Club Corner to line up for what will be a uh, 13 minutes plus one lap race. So the first race is 13 minutes plus one lap. The second race for the uh, BMW Car Club Racing Championship is an 18 minutes plus one lap affair. And we can see there on pole position, which is on the uh, outside here at Silverstone. It's the red number 44 car of uh, Michael Cutt in his uh, E36 M3 and he has already been a winner on a couple of occasions this season. He won the opening two rounds of the championship at Donington Park over the uh, Easter bank holiday weekend and he lies second within the M1 class for the most powerful M series uh, engined cars. Uh, M2 for, for cars which are not quite as uh, powerful as that. Class 4 is for uh, four-cylinder cars, class 6 for six-cylinder cars, and there's a cup class as well. Alongside him on the front row of the grid is Rick Kerry, uh, number uh, number 2 in the 1 Series uh, V8. And he is in that white and blue car, the former uh, British Touring Car Championship uh, driver indeed was uh, Rick Kerry. And then on the second row on the inside you've got Gary Hufford. Now he's Another driver to have had outright wins this season. He won two rounds of the championship at, uh, at Brands Hatch uh, a month or so back at the BMW Deutsch Fest. He's there in the orange car number four you can see on your screen. And next to him you can see the number 33 car of, uh, of Robert Davidson in his silver uh, BMW M3. Then you've got the white car on the inside of the third row. Uh, that is uh, David Kempton, a BMW racer for about 25 years now. Uh, and a former champion in, other, in another BMW championship. And he is alongside the sort of camo red and white and silver and grey and black livery number 15 car of Graham Crowhurst, who is one of the drivers that switched across from the uh, Tequila M3 Cup, which merged into the BMW Car Club Racing uh, Championship uh, for this season. The last few cars you can see are just forming up into position. There'll be no further uh, green flag lap. The race uh, will then get underway, just getting the final few rows of cars into position. 
and uh, then we'll be good to go. Of course, the, the BMW, the 3 Series, and the M3 in particular, Mark, because it makes for a very good, pretty reasonably bulletproof, reliable, and very fast club racing yeah, car. Certainly to be hoped. And of course, there's a link between BMW and the 750 Motor Club, because the first BMW cars were uh, license-built Austin 7s, and uh, that's where the uh, club started. Um, good to see a Mini in the pack uh, as well, built locally at uh, Longbridge, Oxford, uh, at the Mini factory, and uh, they're still building them in great numbers. Uh, but that uh, grid goes all the way back to the Exeter Club corner here. Last two or three cars going into uh, into stage now. Yeah, it certainly does, and we've got some even bigger grids than this that will go uh, all the way around. It looks like the last car is there, and so we should be good to go racing very shortly indeed for 13 minutes plus one lap. Our signal will be the uh, the green flag at the back, I've no doubt. The there it goes. Have gone. There you go. So we're ready for the off now. 13 minute plus one lap race by cuts with the red car as the race gets underway and some cars getting away much better than others. It looks like Rick Kerry in the one series has the best start and he leads as they come down into Abbey for the first time. The pole position car, well he's dropped to about sixth or seventh places. Graham Crowhurst you can see uh, going through on your screen as well in the a camo liveried car, but it looks like it's the Rick Kerry car that has shot into the lead from uh, Robert Davidson, number 33, in second place. And then it might have been David Kempton in third as they uh, made their way uh, around the first couple of corners, heading now through the link and on to the hangar straight for the first time. But that was a poor start for the pole position, man, Mike Cut. Yeah, all about power to weight ratio, I think. The sort of the small compact one series with the V8 had that low down punch out of the blocks to uh, to leave the M3s behind. But uh, it's uh, a relatively long race and uh, we'll see if they can uh, close in. I see the silver car running about fourth has got something obscuring, a, a piece of paper, something obscuring half the uh, uh, the grill in the front, so mm. I wonder whether that's going to overheat later in the race. Well, that's going to be a big danger on a day like today. It's so windy, there's lots of uh, plastic bags and paper bags yeah. blowing yeah. around the circuit. In fairness, it may have been now taken off uh, by that crosswind down the uh, hangar straight, which is going to affect some of the lighter cars more later in the day. There they come to complete lap one. Then it is Rick Kerry, number two, that is in the lead of the race from number 11, David Kempton, Who in was second place. way out wide, coming out of, um, out, out of club corner there. Yeah, Gary Hufford, number four, is third. Robert Davidson, 33, is four, 15. Graham Crowhurst in fifth. And our pole position man, Mike Kurt, number 44, back in sixth place. So there he is now, in fact, on your screens. Very much one to watch. He's just ahead of a car whose transponder's not registered correctly, so we're not quite sure who that is. We'll try and work that out as we go along. There's a change there. That is Robert Davidson at the link getting ahead of Gary Hufford. So number 33, Robert Davidson, now up into third place ahead of the Brands Hatch double winner, Gary Hufford. Yeah, Davidson, who started fourth, uh, now back uh, up into third place. And you can see the bonnet on the silver car of, uh, of Kempton just sort of flaring at the front. Uh, sort of made of quite lightweight material and uh, letting more air in, but perhaps acting as an air brake. It certainly is. That's uh, something that we'll need to keep an eye on. I think it's actually the 33 car, isn't it? Yes, it is, of uh, Davidson out of the uh, Davidson. There's uh, Crawford, the Evo Sport Richmond car. And he's under pressure there as they come on to the start and finish straight from uh, Graham Crowhurst, who was almost uh, alongside him there. And now Mike Cut in the red car is attacking down into Abbey. And he goes past Crowhurst and up into fifth position. So Crowhurst sorry, uh, loses out there, and Mike Cut, the pole position man, goes back up to P5, but still quite a lot of work for him to do. Yeah, he's just picking them off, though, slowly and uh, surely. Now on the tail of uh, that uh, Hufford car. The Hufford uh, successful recently at Brands Hatch, a very different type of circuit uh, to this. Tighter and twistier. Yeah, Hufford actually has got back ahead of uh, yes. Kempton, hasn't he? So Hufford in the orange car, Kempton in the silver car, and now Mike Cut. So signalling his intent to come through there, wasn't he? He was flashing his lights, I think, and saying, I'm, I'm on the way through. That bonnet flapping, I'm sure you'll be able to feel that in the mm. car, maybe even hear it as well, as, as bizarre as it may seem. Yeah, and uh, I should think it will be quite distracting, quite, uh, quite disruptive, really, the, the way it's... Uh, Shuddering like that. That's uh, Robert Davidson, who's uh, down a couple of positions. As the race leader, Rick Kerry, comes through. So he led by 2.68 seconds at the end of the lap. 
and another four seconds back in third place is Hofford. But now Hofford's going to lose his third place because Mike Cut goes through. Yeah, but he's run wide. He turned in too early, ran wide, and he's been gobbled up on the exit of the corner. That's always what happens at a corner like that when you turn in too early to try to make that pass. Physics will not allow you to tighten your line on full throttle. And he's lost two places actually he because has. of that because uh, Davidson with his uh, flapping bonnet and all has gone back through into fifth place. So cut, uh, sorry, back into fourth, uh, back into fifth place, I should say, because they're ahead of Crowhurst. So Kurt's really lost out there and got a lot of, lot of work to do. You can see uh, Crowhurst in sixth place, he's leading his class. Uh, Kevin Denwood in the number seven car is leading class six at the moment. So that's good progress from him, but he only started fourth within that class. And I can't tell you at the moment who is the best of the cup cars. None of them inside the top 20 at the moment, but here's a good battle uh, coming down the uh, Hangar Strait. It's a bit further back down the order. It includes the number seven car. We're back with the leaders. That's uh, Gary Hufford. It's a real three-way fight here for third position, just heading through the veil and, and club corner now. As we could see, that other battle going on in the background. Oh, and there's a touch there down at uh, down at club, the exit of the club. The orange car got a little out of shape, but um, the silver car with that flapping bonnet, which is the Davidson car, uh, manages to uh, to hold on. Harry Captain Davidson, Hufford, Cut, and Crowhurst are the top six. Yeah, and this we're watching there, Cut trying to get ahead of uh, Hufford there. Crowhurst in sixth place, not too far behind them. As they make their way just down that dip into the uh, right hander at the link that uh, brings them onto the hangar straight. Up into the top 12 has come number three, which is Kaz Singh, uh, who is uh, going well. Yes, not out in qualifying, so actually started right at the back of the grid. So that's a very good drive to be up 20-odd places already in in space of only about six minutes of this race. It's a really impressive drive from Kaz Singh in the E46 M3. He's going to move up more, isn't he? Um, he's got a long, he's got a 10 seconds or so to chisel back to the uh, cars ahead of him by the looks of things, though. Yeah, there you can see the number seven car of Kevin Denwood, who's now dropped behind the 59 car of Jim Benson, as far as class six is concerned. There you can see the 66 car of Mark Colmer, one of the M2 machines running in uh, 15th position overall, just behind Darren Ball in that white Rutec International Racing uh, 330, a car that raced in the 330 Challenge uh, last season. Again, that's also been merged into the BMW Car Club Racing Championship for the 2019 season. Yeah, Kassing has actually got too much work to do to improve upon 10th place unless one of the guys uh, has a problem in front of him. Here is uh, that car of Kaz Singh going through. Yeah. Gary Burstow and Kevin Denwood behind him. Yeah, so Kassing up into 10th place now, but he's about 12 seconds behind Adrian Williams, who's the next car up the road. There's Kevin Denwood, uh, who was one of the early adopters in the Compact Cup uh, when that first appeared a few years ago, but now racing in the BMW Car Club Racing uh, Championship. He's just ahead there of the number 59 car of Jim Benson, another of the uh, 330s, which make for a very horrible went to BMW Racing. Somebody at the back with the car with the BMW work stripes over it got very, very crossed up coming out of the, uh, the link. Well, it's still Rick Kerry leading by uh, 3.93 seconds now from, uh, from David Kempton. So the gap has gone out. It's still Robert Davidson in third. Cuts back up to fourth. fourth, which is good for him. Davidson then cut. This is the battle on screen, though, for the lead in Class 6 between Kevin Denwood and Jim Benson. Uh, Kevin Denwood in the mainly pink and green car. As off has oh. gone Davidson. Off has gone Davidson, and that is down towards Village, I think, isn't it? And he is finding his way back onto the circuit eventually. But no, no he's pulling off. Abandoning ship. Into retirement goes Robert Davidson then from third place. And that means that oh, has gone Mike Cut into the top three, and Gary Hufford will be up into fourth place. There's the race leader though, Rick Kerry, with just under four and a half minutes left of this race it to go. Makes a delightful bellowing uh, noise, that car, doesn't it? It does. Uh, it really is uh, something quite uh, quite special. There's another of the uh, one series V8s on the grid. The other one is uh, a bit further back. That's Joe Geach, 
who is running in 17th place in car number 22. David Kempton in a, a new, brand new car for this season, still in second place, but here is uh, Kevin Denwood from Jim Benton. It's a very tight battle, this, for the lead of Class 6 and 12th overall. As far as the championship is concerned within Class 6, it's uh, Darren Ball, actually, that tops the standings. Denwood is fourth, and uh, Jim Benson doesn't have to show until you get down to about seventh or eighth in the point standings within that class. I don't think he's done all of the races this season. Denwood's raced a few cars with the HSCC over the uh, Seventh Motor Club over the years, hasn't he? Yes, he um, has. In different classes. He has, so uh, quite a well-known club racer, Kevin Denwood, number, there, number seven, still leading Class 6 by about, what, four car lengths it is <laughs> over certainly, Jim Benson. Certainly tight certainly is and they've got Darren Ball third in that class he's about a second or so behind the two of them and that class six is a very uh, or reasonably affordable way to go uh, BMW racing certainly and as you can see just how competitive it is uh, Mark Cormer just behind them in fact is uh, number 66 in fourth position one of the M2 cars so theoretically a more powerful machine so we've got just over two and three quarter minutes left to go in this race as still, this battle going into Stowe Corner between number 7 and number 59. Oh, and a spinner. That's the number 10 car for Clive Watson. Now, he's the man that's second in the championship coming into this weekend behind Matt Page within the BMW Cup class. Three points behind Matt Page. So he's had a spin already outside the uh, top 20. Try and uh, get a look on uh, where he has come through. But he'll certainly have lost ground. That's Kerry heading into Stowe Corner once again in car number two. Down the long hair straight, and I imagine there's a, a big... I'm trying to think which direction the wind is in. Headwind, I would think. Uh, uh, down into Stowe Corner today. Turns through Vale and onto Club Corner. He'll probably get a couple more laps out of this race. It's the other one series got very sideways again through here. I think you've run out of rear grip. Is that the uh, the Geach car? I think it is. Yeah, Joe Geach in, uh, in the other one series in this race. Still nose to tail within uh, class six and running a little bit wide there possibly was Kevin Denwood as he came on to the hangar straight that time. Now, can uh, Jim Benson, number 59, whose car you can barely see, can he pick up the toe here and challenge down into Stowe Corner? He looks to the left-hand side of the circuit, which is, of course, the outside for the right-hander, but can he drive all the way around the outside of Kevin Denwood? It looks like he might be able to. Yes, he can. So Jim Benson there, uh, fantastic move, using the slipstream along the hangar straight, takes the lead from Kevin Denwood in Class 6 and up into uh, 11th place overall. Yeah, it was super good at driving that, really well thought out, kept his nerve on the outside, kept it neat and tidy. There's Kevin Denwood trying to uh, come back at Jim Benson, in the 59 car, car with a, a nose, uh, a winger drift there, and some contact. That's the 55 car, that's uh, Raheem Ballou, who started the race in 19th, he's still running in 19th at the moment in actual fact, but may not be for, for much longer. Time those little drops of rain just appearing. One or two cars with wipers going again. The uh, the one series there all over the shop. He loses a place at Abbey there as a result of getting out of shape. Yeah, so Jackie, I think down to 17th place as, uh, as a result of that. As we see that battle, well, you can see now is Jim Benson. He's put a bit of daylight between himself and uh, and Kevin Denwood there in the number seven car. Just wondering, Kevin Denwood got something loose. Looks like the uh, Perspex window maybe was has just come popped out, out, out of its uh, out of its holder. Yeah, I think yeah. it has. Yeah, and behind them, this is Darren Ball there in third place within class six, number twenty five, and he's just ahead of the M two class. Oh, the spinner! Oh, it's Gary Hufford from fourth position has spun, coming out of club there are corner. There two cars involved down there, aren't there? Or two cars. Another one's off as well. There's one off on the runoff, which is just out of shot. There we are. You can see it now. It's one of the, uh, uh, looks like one of the cup class cars that's, that's got, got involved some there. damage at the front with the, uh, the mm. steering's broken. Steering's or, broken. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it looks like Gary was, yeah, he has now driven away. That car is uh, sufficiently far away from the edge of the circuit not to be too much of a problem, I think. The driver getting out of the car as the rain gets a little bit heavier now. We've had the end of the times element of the race, so Rick Kerry on his uh, final and lap. And the rain's getting heavier. It is definitely getting heavier now, which is probably just as well this race 
for the BMW Car Club Racing Challenge is, is coming to an end. We've just started, in fact, the, uh, the last lap for Rick Kerry. He's just turned his way uh, through Abbey for the first time. Here he is now. You can see he's dealing with quite a bit of traffic. He's dealing with it very nicely because he's actually mm. made another nine tenths of a second on that lap over pursuer David Kempton at number 11. Yeah, and uh, a great start to the race, so really, really did help him, as you say, and that the inherent advantage uh, of that car, I think. A clear two. track, it's, uh, yes, it's, um, it's smaller, um, better through the air, um, it's lighter, it's got that great slug of V8 uh, torque, which helps it. Yeah, and he's going to lap that, uh, the similar car, actually, although it doesn't look quite as hot with the big wing on the back, the, uh, the Joe Geach version of the uh, the one series and uh, through goes Rick Kerry well it, it needs a wing on the back I think to try and <laughs> nail the back down Rick oh. Kerry all down into uh, the oh and Geach gets sideways and uh, looks like he's going to go around he does he spins thought he could do the same as uh, leader Rick Kerry but um, doesn't have the grip to be able to do it so Rick Kerry's going to come through and take the chequered flag it's going to be his third win of the season in the BMW Car Club Racing Championship, adding to the two wins he had at Castle Coombe earlier on in the year. Then it's Rick Kerry that takes the win by 5.8 seconds from David Kempton in second place. And we're right now very grateful that we have got a screen in here because we can't see much out of our window anymore with the uh, the rain on it. Mike Cutts has come through number 44 in third That's position. The fire extinguisher man who started uh, uh, on uh, pole. Yeah, and so a good comeback from him. Graham Crowhurst, number 15, takes fourth place. Uh, of the cars for the downward you take the checker flag a lap down Stuart Pywell you can see Gareth Montgomery Joe Geach for example Jason Hollyhead number 69 comes through in fifth place Richard Bromley number 27 takes sixth position as the last few cars just making their way around including Cass Singh who's made it up into eighth position I notice but here's Jim Benson number 59 watching him he's now gonna uh, try and lap one of the back markers as he goes through the final couple of, couple of corners he's gonna come through to take the victory in class six today in the first of our two BMW Car Club Racing Championship races. Out of uh, club he goes and up to take the chequered flag. Gary Hufford eventually you can just see going across the line in front of him. He took 10th place after that incident with one of the uh, one of the other cars down on the exit of club corner. And oh, Rick Kerry's come through to take the chequered flag again just for good measure possibly didn't see it the first time around. It's very said. difficult there. In fact, you're turning on that long, long right radius mm. and uh, the car's taking you out to the outside. And uh, It's not where you're naturally looking, is it? Exactly. So, is, that, yeah. is that car left hooker? Uh, I think it might be. Yeah, yeah. which doesn't yeah. help. It doesn't indeed. So, uh, a very entertaining race down the order, but a dominant win for Rick Kerry in the first of our uh, two races today for the BMW Car Club Racing Championship. Here are the results now. Rick Kerry taking the win by 5.8 seconds from David Kempton. Michael Cutt, number 44, in third place. Graham Crowhurst, number 15, winning class M2. From 67, Adrian Williams, who was 7th overall, and 83, Gary Burstow, who was 9th overall. We'll have a look a bit further back down the results. There we go, Jim Benson, 11th overall, winning uh, class 6 from Kevin Denwood, number 7. Darren Ball was third within that class. Uh, Mark Kummer and Raheem Ballou, some of our other class M2 runners you can see there, uh, finishing in 13th and 20th positions respectively. 21st was Matt Page, so uh, that's another good result for him within the BMW Cup for the compact cars. 21st position overall and a comfortable win over Carl McMillan, number 60, and Clive Watson, number 10, uh, despite his spin early on in the race. So Matt Page will extend his lead in the championship with that. Richard Harrison, 333, the only car in class four. And then rounding out the uh, well, non finishes actually, Pete Skinner, I think, was probably that car involved at the exit of club. Michael Dark and Robert Davidson, also non finishers. So there's Rick Kerry heading into the pit lane at the end of that race. I think, though, Josh Brown already down in the pit lane with the drivers that finished in second and third places. Josh, down to you. Thanks, Ian. Yes, with uh, Rick Kerry coming in. Let's do it in reverse order. So third place was Mike Cutt. Uh, Mike, it went all a bit wrong at the start. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, it was an absolute jigger up from me. Let's just say that, yes. Uh, pulled uh, fourth instead of second. Um, just one of them things. 
by the time I got going again and put into third, it was it, what, they're gone. So I just had to try and hang on to them and, and see if I could make some time on them. I got on the podium. That's that was the aim then. Actually, I, I thought right, if I can get on the podium, that'll be okay. So yeah, yeah. Good race, good battle, a good battle with a few of them, really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. The season started so well at Donington, but now, like you say, it's very competitive and you're having some real battles out there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's very close. I mean, you only have to look at qualifying, you know, point one, point two, point three. you know, wow, that's something else, you know. Um, you know, credit to these guys as well we're racing with, we're all pretty clean and trying to knock, knock each other off and stuff like that, which you get in a few of the championships, so it's been good, been really good. Well, well done on the third place. Second place was Dave Kempton. Dave, you, ma you managed to keep Mike back, but it looked like Rick uh, got a really good start and then nobody really able to keep up with him from there. No, I mean, I started fifth. Qualifying was a, was a pretty rank this morning. A bit disappointed with that. But um, I had a great start. We changed the clutch from the last round, got it off the, the, the line like a dream, slotted in behind Rick within a couple of corners while they battled behind me, and I just sort of got my head down. Um, Rick's a very good driver that won it today, waiting for him to make a mistake. Nice and smooth, never made one mistake. But uh, this one, this result is, is good for us because for our sponsors, Redbox, Alton and AA Woods, you've got some people watching from Spain today streaming, so hello to you. But uh, no, it was a, a good result. And uh, we've got another race in a couple of hours. The only problem is today my, my diff was in between gears, which cost me half a second. But uh, no, hats off, everyone gets them really well. Racing was really good, got a second. Well done for first, well done for the rest. Bit of rain at the end there, did that affect the track much? Um, not really, no, but the problem is that I, I had a big gap behind me and a big gap in front of me. It's like, do I push? I'm not going to catch. Um, you know, I tried to push it hard as I could, but I'd, I've had a fantastic grip. So it's, it's a new car. Um, we're still trying to get the setup sort of correct with it. Um, Mike C36 on a par with mine, but he's had it a bit longer. It's well set up. It was very unfortunate today because he would have been right up the front. Um, and obviously Gary, who, who qualified third, I think he got a bit bogged down. I mean, the front five today is like 0.8 of a second in qualifying. You know, fifth man could win, you know, first man could finish fifth. You know, I was fifth, finished second today, so hopefully the spoils go around. But now hopefully um, they, do a river, they, they draw the, the rounds out uh, for where you're positioned for the next, next races. Um, hopefully I'll stay on second and get a good start like the first one. And um, if Rick's there, hopefully I could defend and keep behind me. But let's see what happens. Well done on second place. The race winner, like you say, was Rick Kerry. Well done, Rick. A, a great start there. And you extended your lead um, from there on in. Yeah, I was quite lucky. I got a good start. Um, Mike said he, he missed. Uh, he went from second to fourth. Uh, went from first to fourth, which he's normally good off the line. And I know uh, Rob is as well. Um, and then lucky enough, I managed to keep my distance while they squabbled amongst themselves. So probably made me look better than what it was, to be honest. Looked like you got this car going really well. Now you've run lots of different BMWs over the years. How's the, how's the V8 1 Series? Yeah, it's getting there. It's been, it's been a steep learning curve. Um, we've now got it handling. We've still got stuff we've got to sort out with the car, but it's, um, it's just really nice that it's, uh, it's sort of finally getting there after a couple of years of hard work. It looked like everyone's really enjoying this championship as well. The class system seems to work really well to make some competitive racing all the way through the field. Yeah, it's a fantastic um, series, really. Uh, you know, you've only got to look at qualifying. You had four four cars within four tenths of each other. Um, I know I sort of run away a little bit, but they were squabbling over themselves. So, um, so to be honest, um, you know, it just shows you how close and how well it's uh, it is run that we're all that competitive and that close to each other. And of course, you've got the one series and then the E36s and E46s, M3s all together. So everything in the rule set seems to be working too. Yeah, it's fantastic because uh, first, second, and third were three different models of BMW. So it's great. Different tyres as well. It's you know, it's it's marvellous that it's uh, it's getting that close up at the front now. Well, well done on your win. Good luck for later on. We also got Jim Benson down here, Jim who took the uh, Class 6 win for the 610. It was like a close battle out there as well. Yeah, it was me and Kevin Denwood. We traded places a few times, um, but uh, managed to hold on to the end, so I was pretty pleased about that. You were one of the uh, 330s that come over from the 330 Challenge from last year and mix it as well with some of the higher class cars. Yeah, they're pretty quick when they come past, but I uh, managed to stick on the tail of a few of them. Um, and it's always beneficial to, uh, to follow someone through, down, especially down the hangar straight, see if you can get a bit of a slipstream. Especially on a day like today. Absolutely. With this wind, you need all, all the help you can get. Well, well done on your class win. Thank you very much. We also had class wins um, in the M2 from Graham Crowhurst and the cup class from Matt Page. That was Jim Benson, the six-cylinder winner. The overall top three was Mike Cutt in third, second Dave Kempton and the race winner Rick Kerry. The next race of the day here at Silverstone is for the Bike Sports Championship. <laughs> 